smoke up the old shop. Okay, a good friend of mine requested me that I do the following. Now as we have bored out the, the cast iron housing, we will turn our attention to the rotary table spindle itself. And it ha it's, it's machined out of one piece. I think it started life as a casting, and then it got machined all over. And it has the spigot here, which acts as the main axle. This is cast iron, and it's uh, 45 millimeters. We opened up the bore in the, in the cast iron housing to 45.2 millimeters roughly um, so this is too small now and obviously that was intentional <laughs> um, so I made this bushing out of O2 tool steel otherwise known as uh, Otherwise known as uh, 12842 90 mncrv 8 um, This is a, a very simple to harden tool steel. You just heat it up to 840 degrees C and you quench it in oil and it jumps up to I think something like 60 Rockwell. Then you can temper it back until you're happy with it. Um, I turned this out of a solid piece, which is quite wasteful. I wish I had a, a big enough rotor brooch with um, enough cutting depth so I can machine out the slug. But um, my biggest rotor brooch is 25 millimeters, and it has only uh, 25 millimeter cutting depth. I could have gone in from both sides, but I'm not sure if I could uh, get good enough grip on something with such a thin wall so I drilled and bored it with a twist drill and a boring bar. Um, right now the oven is heating up to 860 uh, degrees C. Um, we will toss the part in, heat it up, quench it and then we will hard turn the internal diameter. I have some uh, CBN inserts here, cubic boring nitride and we will also after hard turning the inside we will machine down the spigot to fit the sleeve very precisely then we will Loctite it on with Loctite 648 which will last forever and then we set the whole mess up on the magnetic chuck on the lathe and we will hard turn the other diameter of the sleeve to a very close fit and maybe lap it. Okay, I got some vegetable oil in this can. The part is at 850 degrees C and I had it soaking in the oven for 20 minutes. So, now we take it out and drop it into the oil and then I will cover it up with a piece of sheet metal so I don't smoke up the whole shop. There we go. The bushing has cooled down completely and uh, it's hard as <laughs> It's hard as can be, the 65 Rockwell hardness testing file barely grabs. So we have to draw this down in hardness. And I'm aiming for roughly uh, 55 Rockwell C, which is not glass hard, but a normal file is on the edge of uh, cutting it. And up here we have the tempering 
uh, diagram. It shows the temperature C down here on the X axis and the hardness F tempering on the uh, Y axis. Um, at 200 degrees C tempering we go down to uh, about 60 C Rockwell. At 300 degrees C we go down to uh, 57 Rockwell. And at 400 degrees we go down to 50 Rockwell C. So we're going to put the part in the oven at roughly 350 degrees C. Then we'll let it cool down in air and that should give us 55 Rockwell C. <laughs> I hope. Uh, and before we do that we check if the part has warped. This steel does not change its dimensions by one per mil but is rather stable in dimension. So the stock had 46 millimeter in diameter and it warped slightly, so it's not massive out of round. Out of round, of course, I to do a proper check on the um, roundness, I would have to spin it in a V block, but I don't think that it is necessary in this case because it will get machined all over anyway. But looks like we don't, we didn't get horrible amount of. Um, warp. Okay, I got to part at 350 degrees C for about half an hour in the oven and now I took this um, this dark uh, dark yellow color which you cannot really see because most of the part is scaled. I really like the hardening setup I have in place now. Um, I tempered it at 350 and this is the 50 Rockwell hardening file, hardened test file. Slips over the surface, doesn't grab at all. And the 55 Rockwell grabs. I could I could take a, a cut with it on the material, but um, you actually just bear down on it and you check if um, the file teeth want to grab into the material that's uh, otherwise you, you you wear down these files like crazy but that's that's quite cool um, this is the bushing now we have to to hard turn the inside just clean it up it doesn't need to have a, a specific diameter and what I'm going to use are these uh, cubic boric nitride inserts. These are a wacky form. These have a, a soft steel carrier, which is a, 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 a cartridge-like piece. And we have a piece of cubic boric nitride um, braced on there. And <laughs> I bought I bought these bo this box. In fact, uh, two boxes of these for. I think 10 bucks and uh, <laughs> yeah those are I, uh, this is a uh, lifetime deal normally uh, a CBN insert costs about uh, 30 to 50 bucks with one cutting edge um, these are uh, designed for a face mill for hard, hard milling but if we if we look down on it we have a normal cutting edge here so we can do outside turning or uh, yeah, inside turning if we put it on an angle like this or outside like this should work out fine uh, we only need to make a simple holder which is a piece of uh, 12 meter 12 millimeter round stock with a threaded hole on the end so I can bolt this cartridge to it should be fun. Okay, I'm over at the lathe, and it turned out that you don't need uh, CBN tooling for 50 to 55 Rockwell. Uh, 
a well sharpened fine grain carbide tool that's the trick too so I already took some cuts but didn't clean up completely yet so let's take another two tenths of a millimeter And those are the chips that you don't want to get on the ways of your machine or under your felt wipers on your machines because these are hardened and when they break down into smaller particles they get abrasive or they will, they will wear down the ways of your machine uh, without a problem. So surface finishes I would almost call it spectacular. <laughs> um, I'm quite happy how this comes out. So hard milling and hard turning are interesting processes in themselves. I do hard, I, we do hard milling at work all the time. All, all the injection mold parts at work get finished by hard milling and the hard milling has taken away so much handwork from the mold makers. There is so little hand polishing left to them. And also the hard milling repa replaces a lot of uh, sinker EDM work. So hard milling and hard turning are standard techniques in the industry and also at home with light duty machines if you know what you have to do um, they are very mighty processes and for the auto diameter we will use the CBN insert because these produce practically no cutting pressure and it's super easy to to hit a very close tolerance with them on the inside here I don't need a super tight fit because I can machine the other part to fit this and it's a glue joint anyway I clamped the spindle of the rotary table on my magnetic chuck and I indicated it to run true. Then I recut the center down here with a 60 degree uh, boring bar so it runs true. It, it was just a chamfer, um, nothing you could reference a, a center on. This is a dead, bull, a dead center, a bullnose center. I don't have a live bullnose center for the slave yet, something I want to make one day. And I'm going to machine the spigot down to 41 millimeters, so it's a, a nice sliding fit on the hardened bushing. Let's go! <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> I removed the tool so I don't uh, foobar my hand on the po pointy cutting tool. And as you can see, the bushing is a, a nice sliding fit on the um, on the spigot that just turned. The bushing is slightly out of round on this side. This is the end I was clamping in the three char chuck. So slides on nice until I get into the area of, of out of roundness um, but that's that shouldn't be an issue as I'm lock tightening it on the full surface onto the spigot 
I'm rather happy. Okay, I'm preparing the part for gluing and I'm cleaning everything off with isopropane alcohol. So we don't have any mishap when we glue on the bushing. Okay, I'm using the good old Loctite 648 high strength retaining compound. I still have something that I glued with this stuff to come apart on its own. Um, even if you use a, a torch to heat it up, it takes, it takes really a lot of... <laughs> uh, you really want to get it off if you have to. Um, just trying a little bit won't, <laughs> won't cut the mustard here. So let's get a little bit of Loctite on there. Okay, that, this is a case to have three hands. Okay, there we go. Sliding it on, slightly spinning. And bottoming out. Lock it in place. And the Done. 648 Loctite you have a few seconds to push the part on, adjust it, and then it sets. Um, yeah, that's done. <laughs> this part won't come off again. We have a massive, a huge, huge, massive surface for the glue. And yeah, this is going nowhere. So now we have ugh, <laughs> a huge mess of Loctite to clean up. But in this case, it's better to have way too much Loctite on there instead of having a starving glue joint. So you can see that the hard turning with the CBN insert leaves a surface finish that's just incredible. Um, it's, um, <laughs> uh, hard turning with the CBN is, is a rather interesting process. Um, the inserts are generally ground to a negative geometry, so in theory they should have an immense pre cutting pressure, but in reality um, they are just as soft cutting and as um, easy with the cutting pressure as, say, a high positive aluminum insert. I don't fully understand why that's the fact. I, th I think it has to do with the immense cutting speed you run these guys at. Um, if you run them too slow, they don't work at all. The chip has to come off the insert blue or even slightly glowing. You saw the little firework down on the <laughs> down in the chips as I began, and <laughs> doesn't harm the insert at all. As for the for the turning, I took one of the CBN inserts. They have a, a steel a steel carrier, and I just TIG welded it with a stainless st stainless steel filler rod um, all the way around onto a piece of scrap mild steel. So I can clamp it in a boring bar holder and run it along the part. And this is a 12 by 12 millimeter cross section. So with this little overhang, that's stiff enough. And also the the <laughs> my rigid tool post is yeah. This is a, a very very solid setup, and the surface finish I get is marvelous. Okay. The battery of the camera died on me, but I got the diameter of the spigot down to 45 point, uh, 15 and a little bit. And I, I tried to get the casting on and doesn't, of course. 
it, it won't, but... Ugh. The, the bore in the casting is 45.13 uh, and this is two hundredths of a room with oversize. So it wants to go on and you could force it in with a dead blow hammer, but that, that doesn't, doesn't uh, make any sense, of course, for a rotary table. So we have to bring this down to uh, 45.0. Oh, no, 45.13 minus a little bit, so it's a dead tight fit in the bore. But I'm not going to do that by turning, I'm just going to chamfer this and then I'm going to make a lap to lap the auto diameter here down. I'm not sure um, if I can lap up to a shoulder, so I'm going to undercut this um, edge up here very slightly with the with tool. That's a undercut of about uh, three, four hundredths of a millimeter. And I hope that it is wide enough to lap up to the shoulder that way. Um, need to chamfer the edge here. This should work with a carbide tool too. We go reasonably slow. Not a problem at all. That's a, a very high positive carbide insert that I reground myself. Okay, I'm lapping the outer diameter of the hardened bushing and I made this lap out of a, a piece of aluminum. In fact, this is an old lapping ring that I used before. I just bored it open to 45 millimeters um, and I cut in a few slots to carry the diamond slurry I'm using. Just, I just went in with the bandsaw and uh, sp spaced them by eye and cut in about half a millimeter deep. I have a, a five millimeter screw to collapse it. And this acts also as my handle. For the slurry I just dissolved some uh, seven micron diamond paste in some, wa in some water soluble oil with some water added. And then I just let it walk back and forth. Most of the black dirt you see here is material from the, the lap being uh, worn down. The 7.5 micron um, diamond was way too slow to do any noticeable material removal, so I changed to the third. Uh, uh, grinding compound 280 grit which feels rather coarse but still leaves a, a beautiful finish on the surface And nobody ever said that lapping is a, <laughs> a clean process. Okay, I got all the lapping done and surface finish came out quite good. Um, I have a few strange marks, circular marks around the diameter and I think that's um, galling from the aluminum lap. I think I tightened down on the tension screw a little bit too much. So I ended up with these strange circular marks. I checked them under the microscope and they have nothing embedded in them, but they are there. It's a bit funky. Um, and I cannot feel them with my fingernails, so I would guess they are um, smaller than five thousandths of a millimeter deep. And as I can't change it anyway, so I have to live with that. The diameter came out quite good. Um, I checked with the internal mics against my uh, outside mic, the bore, it's uh, 45.13 and this mic's at, at 45.12, top and bottom. 
That means that I have one hundredth of a millimeter difference between the shaft and the bore. That gives me one hundredth of a millimeter gap for oil. Or five thousandths of a millimeter gap per side if it centers up. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a nice solid fit. Uh, oh. Better get some oil on the sliding surface too. Yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> uh, had it running dry and dry. That's not good. So, oh, that's <coughs> that fits perfect. <laughs> um, I guess. That's the most precise Vertex rotary table out there, and the only one with a hard bushing in there. Here we can see the shiny band on this diameter here. That's the hardened bushing, and the sliding partners um, hardened and lapped steel against Fine, fine surface, fine, fine finished cast iron should about last forever, pretty much. Um, excellent wear properties against each other. Um, I think this rotary table will last forever, or at least outlast me, <laughs> if warm drive and warm don't fail. But that's a completely different can of worms. I should repeat my disclaimer here. Um, out of the box, this Vertex rotary table was perfectly fine. I, I used it for roughly a year now, and I did a lot of projects on it, and everything came out perfectly fine. Um, the only reason I did this rebuild is uh, because I have some kind of dysfunction that doesn't allow me to use uh, machine tooling without having to fiddle with it, and. Uh, also, this is a some one of those projects. Um, I get a lot of knowledge out. I learned, for example, that you should not over tighten your lap, your right out, out, outside lap, because it will gall. I also learned that uh, the uh, one twenty eight forty two tool steel is very very little prone to warpage due to hardening, and it's a very easy to harden tool steel. I machined a ring out of a piece of steel with a M45 by one fine thread on it, as you can see here, and I screwed and dowel pinned it to the end of the, uh, to the shaft of the rotary table spindle. And now I can use a nut to adjust the end play in the rotary table. The original system with the, there is a plate and it has four leveling set screws and you adjust the end play with those four set screws. It works, but it's very tedious to set. And um, I don't think it's a, a great design. It works, but yeah, <laughs> not perfect. So I machined this uh, threaded ring now I have the ability to use this nut that I machined out of the original uh, backplate. I, I bored it out and I, I threaded it M45 by 1, fine thread. It even fits, which is quite nice. Fits uh, quite tight even. Has two spanner holes, of course, for a... For an, uh, or a spa face spanner wrench like this one and of course as it's adjusting the end play it needs some way to lock it in place um, normally you would uh, jam up two of those nuts against each other or you would slit the nut in half and have a, a screw pulling the two sides together and that four times and that would clamp the nut or uh, you could do what I do, because when the nut is in the cavity of the rotary table back here, I cannot access the side and have a, a set screw with a copper tip pressing against the thread. doesn't work, because there is no access. So I needed to find some way to lock the thread from this direction. And that's what I came up with. I drilled through from the outside of a 4mm drill, and I cross-drilled it 
and tapped it with an M5 thread. And then I have a bunch of small parts. I have a set screw, a small brass plug and a 4mm ball bearing. And those parts go in there. The brass plug and the ball bearing. The ball bearing ball sits behind the brass plug. Here you can see it in the threaded hole and it's hard to see because it's uh, dark in there. So I have this loose ball bearing ball in there and it's beyond the center of this uh, five millimeter threaded hole and I have a set screw with a point on the end and when I get the set screw in the the angled tip of the screw pushes the ball bearing this direction the ball of course pushes out the brass plug which will lock against the thread of the spindle you can see by spinning the set screw in and out I can move the the plug the, the bronze plug it's not brass sorry it's bronze um, in and out Okay, let's thread this on and see how it behaves. Okay, now <laughs> I, I tightened the nut slightly too much. It's uh, locking this, uh, the spindle of the rotary table. Let's find a, a reasonable tight spot. Okay. <laughs> That's way nicer than the set screw end adjustment. And now I just have to tighten up the set screw and now it should be locked. Let's see. Oh, not, not very much. Seems to need a little bit more torque. A little bit of A-bomb torque there. Mm, bigger screwdriver. Okay, there we go. Now the, the spindle and the nut on the end is nice and tight and I only have this single set screw that I can tighten and loosen and uh, it's not protruding behind the back of the rotary table so that's good too because it still can lay down flat on the table. Um, I like that solution. This is a rather neat, um, it's an elegant solution in my mind. Uh, yes, it slightly deforms the, the nut egg-shaped, but I don't think that that is an issue, but we will see. Um, I will take this to Denmark with me to scrape, to work at, at first to talk with Richard King about the rotor table, what he would do with it. Maybe throw it into the trash bin <laughs> um, and maybe start to scrape on it. But I will do a little bit of separate footage about Denmark and then I will report back on this rotary table. So thank you all for watching and see you next time.